News at 10 starts right now. An updated prediction. It's the largest hurricane they've ever seen coming out of the Atlantic. Hurricane Irma makes a shift, putting Metro Atlanta and North Georgia at greater risk. The new track forecast is a little to the left of our previous one. A state of emergency declared for 30 Georgia counties and mandatory evacuations for the entire Georgia coast. So if you've been asked to evacuate from an evacuation zone, please follow that advice. Right this minute, Hurricane Irma is pummeling the Turks and Caicos Islands. We are talking sustained winds of 175 miles per hour. At least 14 deaths in the Caribbean are now being blamed on Hurricane Irma, including four in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and it's not expected to lose steam for days. Let's get straight over to Fox 5 Storm Team Chief Meteorologist David Chanley. David, this storm has already proven deadly. Uh, no doubt about it, and if you don't think this is serious, you need to get on board because this is a once-in-a-lifetime type things going on right now. This is the video out of Barbuda, the tiny island nation first hit, and we understand of the 1600 residents there, just about every home has been touched in some way. Most of it, 60% have been destroyed, and that is just stop number one. And we look at Hurricane Irma on the move. Of course, it brushed across the, the British Virgin Islands, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and now bearing down, as we said, on the Turks and the Caicos with winds at 175 miles an hour. Take a look at the latest now from the National Hurricane Center. We'll put this into motion for you, and you can see how we're on the move over some very warm waters there between the Bahamas and Cuba. So by tomorrow afternoon, still a Category 5 hurricane, and then we start making the turn, and this is what we're waiting for late Friday and into Saturday, and it looks like they were kind of gunning for Miami now with the latest information that I have as far as where the landfall will take place, and then making that turn right up through the middle part of Florida. Look at that. Possibly a Category 4 hurricane over Orlando. How about that? And then moving on into our state, long about early on Monday as a hurricane. So we're going to certainly see impacts of that here in Metro Atlanta as far as gusty damaging winds and some very heavy rainfall. Right now, the first watches for the United States, a hurricane watch out for South Florida. Look at this. Peak winds 120 to 130 miles an hour with gusts up to 170. That includes the metro Miami area. We're going to talk about the impacts again in North Georgia. The timing of all this coming up in just a few minutes. All right, David, thanks so much. Well, today, Governor Nathan Deal expanded the state of emergency in Georgia from six to 30 counties. He also ordered the mandatory evacuation of all areas east of I-95, something the Georgia coast hasn't seen in more than a century. On Saturday, eastbound traffic on I-16 will be reversed, only allowing the westbound traffic. Now, with all of the people heading this way, Georgia's Emergency Management Agency is keeping a close eye on the storm and on the roads. And tonight, it is all hands on deck at GEMA. It's teaming up with agencies like the Red Cross as the state decides where to send resources. Uh, GEMA tells us it allocates supplies based on the latest weather outlook. And for anyone who might find themselves with no place to stay, uh, shelters are open for evacuees. Tell me how you're doing on shelters right now. Right now we are coordinating with the Red Cross, DPH, um, and the local officials to uh, determine which shelters we're going to be using, what capacity they have. Tell me how the citizens will find out what shelters they can go to. How will you get that word out? Uh, we will be putting out a press release with additional information on that, but they can also go to gma.ga.gov, and as we have information available, we'll be posting that on our website. Can you say it one more time, a little slower? Sure, it's gma.ga.gov. Uh, Governor Deal has put the Georgia National Guard on standby. Meanwhile, in Florida, officials are urging residents to get out before it's too late, but that's a lot easier said than done. Yeah, Florida Governor Rick Scott has ordered the closings of all schools, all colleges, and universities throughout the state. That's from Friday to Monday. Now, flights are booked, gas is in short supply, and traffic at a standstill in many key evacuation spots. Seems like this becoming all too common. Now, fueling up isn't easy when hundreds of gas stations are out of gas. Well, tonight, Governor Rick Scott is trying to solve that problem, announcing that he's taking steps to bring more fuel to Florida by expediting gas deliveries to stations. And that means highway patrol units are acting as escorts to get fuel trucks through the traffic to key evacuation points. 
Well, as people hit the road to escape Hurricane Irma's path, traffic flow is a concern. Now, the Georgia Department of Transportation already making changes to help ease the congestion for those fleeing the storm. Well, Fox News, Claire Sims is live along I-75 in McDonough tonight. Claire, this is going to impact commuters tomorrow as well, obviously. Yeah, if you live south of the city and you use these I-75 express lanes to get to and from work, they are now working just a little bit differently. So instead of changing northbound and southbound with rush hour, they are just staying northbound to help out those evacuees. Based on what area of the state you're in right now, we're either seeing a 600% increase in congestion down in the Valdosta area or about a 300% increase in Macon, and, it, and it's only Thursday. Georgia Department of Transportation spokeswoman Natalie Dale says our state is already seeing a huge influx of Hurricane Irma evacuees, but the DOT has plans in place to handle all the extra traffic. Right now, express lanes on I-75 will stay in the northbound direction until further notice. Saturday morning, transportation officials will reverse the flow of I-16 eastbound to westbound, adding more lanes for those coming inland, just like they did last year ahead of Hurricane Matthew. We are prepared. We're turning I-16 around, contraflowing I-16 starting Saturday. We don't have to do that a lot, so that really tells you the severity of this storm as it's coming in. And to help all the extra motorists on the road, Dale says the DOT has sent extra hero and champ units to South Georgia to troubleshoot along I-16, I-75, and I-95. We're definitely throwing everything we have as a department at this to make sure that people are getting from point A to point B safely, that they're getting out of harm's way in a safe, efficient, effective manner. Now, one more thing that the DOT is doing, we've had people reach out to us and ask us about construction. GDOT says that they will be halting all lane closures related to construction south of I-20 by noon tomorrow, so that's going to help as well. Now, coming up all new on Fox 5 News Edge at 11, what they say everyone in Metro Atlanta can do to help ease the congestion over the next few days. Again, that's all new tonight on Fox 5 News Edge at 11. For now, we are live in McDonough, Claire Sims. We'll see you then, Claire. Thanks. Now, finding gas is a problem, and so is booking a flight. Ticket prices out of Florida are soaring. Yeah, but now some airlines are capping their prices, making it more affordable to hop on a flight before the storm hits. JetBlue and American Airlines are offering one-way flights out of Florida and other potentially affected cities for $99. Unfortunately, many of those seats are sold out. Now, Delta is capping flights at $399. Some airlines are also offering the chance to change flight plans without having to pay for additional fees. Now, count on Fox 5 for everything you need to know about this monster Category 5 storm. We have a team of photographers and reporters heading to the coast to provide live up to the second coverage. And, of course, we'll continue to track Irma's changing path throughout this newscast and online 24-7. Well, breaking right now, it is a massive cybersecurity breach, and it's affecting everyone with a credit history. Yeah. Equifax, one of the th big three credit reporting agencies, says its files affecting 183 million Americans were breached by cyber criminals. Well, Fox News' George Franco joins us now from Equifax headquarters in Atlanta with more on the story. George? Well, Russ and Sine, if you have some of these, it's pretty likely that your credit has been reported to banks and other consumer agencies by this agency, Equifax, here in Atlanta, which now says they have had a massive breach. Equifax got breached. That's uh, not very good. Another screw up. <laughs> It's a massive security breach of the credit monitoring service Equifax, which says could affect as many as 143 million Americans whose credit is reported to Equifax. On July 29th of this year, we discovered that attackers had gained unauthorized access to certain Equifax data files. In a website video, chairman and CEO of Equifax Rick Smith says the company acted immediately to stop the intrusion of information like phone numbers, social security numbers, addresses and more. He says Equifax hired a leading cybersecurity firm to determine the scope of the attack. I'm pleased to report 
that the review found no evidence of unauthorized activity on our core credit reporting databases. But that personal information, your account numbers, that has not been compromised. Cybersecurity expert Farrell Macon with Veristore, a Duluth company which specializes in cybersecurity, says even though the breach at Equifax is contained, it opens the door to a host of other cyber predators. But you're going to get phone calls, you're going to get emails from different organizations. They'll send a page with a link saying your account has been compromised and you need to change your password. Macon says those are phishing scams by other cyber crooks trying to take advantage of the Equifax situation. They have made credit services available to every U.S. consumer. He commended Equifax for offering free credit service to U.S. consumers whether they're monitored by Equifax or not and warns of the coming cyber fallout. It's like a watering hole, right? The rain just came, the pond's full, the alligators are in the pond. Don't be the animal walking up. <laughs> And Equifax also says that the information of more than 200,000 customers who have credit cards has also been accessed. If you'd like more information on this, you can go to our website, fox5atlanta.com, where we have also included the link to Equifax. Coming up, all new on Fox 5 News Edge at 11 o'clock, some more information on how to protect yourself in this new cyber reality we are living in. In Atlanta tonight, I'm George Franco, Fox 5 News. All right, George, we appreciate it. Well, a federal appeals court has ruled that extended family members such as grandparents are exempt from President Trump's travel ban while the ban is under review. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals made that ruling on Thursday. The ruling also said that refugees accepted by a resettlement agency should not be banned. Now, back in June, the Supreme Court said the 90-day ban could be enforced until it had a chance to review its legality. Russ? Well, Sinead, a Metro Atlanta mayor indicted on more than 60 charges. He paid for a porn site under, uh, with his campaign funds. Well, we caught up with Mayor Tom Witz, his reaction to the charges coming up. Listen, I know. dude, you pulled that out like a gun out the back of the Jeep. A sheriff's deputy shoots a news photographer twice. Why he claims it was all a giant mistake. I'm Fox 5 IT reporter Randy Travis. Customers complain this Roswell car dealership sent them a fake Carfax to convince them to buy cars that had some pretty serious damage. Well, guess what happened when we went car shopping?